Hello, my name is Attorney Paul Chang, and today is another day of Ask the Attorney. Today's lecture is very important, okay? And it's going to be very difficult to understand. So I'm going to need you to really, really focus on this. Now, before we begin, I just want to emphasize that this relationship is not an attorney-client relationship. So what I'm going to need you to do is go to the initial video that talks about what this relationship is. But most importantly, again, this is not an attorney-client relationship. Today's topic is on mechanics liens. Mechanics liens are very, very important in California, okay? Let me give you an example of a mechanics lien. Somebody works on your property, they work, uh, they build a home, and it's $100,000, okay? And you only pay $70,000 as the homeowner. Well, the person has a mechanics lien against you for $30,000. So that kind of lets you know exactly what a mechanics lien is. A mechanics lien, if properly done, creates a cloud on title. And what that means is, that it allows everybody in the world to know that there's a lien on your property. It prevents you many times from getting a loan or selling your property until the mechanics lien is taken care of, okay? So today's question relates directly to mechanics liens and it is this. Dear Attorney Chang, I'm a property owner in San Gabriel. About two years ago, I paid someone $5,000 to pave a new driveway. He hired someone else to get it done. Suddenly, he disappeared and when I recently tried to refinance my home, I was denied because the bank said I have a lien on the property. I told the contractor that I paid the person $5,000, excuse me, the subcontractor that I paid the person $5,000 and it was not my fault that he did not pay him. The subcontractor told me that he did not care and now wants me to pay him $25,000 to release my property. I don't have $25,000. That is the reason why I'm getting the loan. What do I do? This is completely unfair. Charles from San Gabriel. Charles, I just want you to know that indeed, mechanics cleans many times seem unfair because what ends up happening is that there is always a possibility that you pay a contractor and then the, and the contractor hires somebody else and then that person doesn't get paid and that person comes after you. I want you to know in California, there is although a view that people should not get work done for free there's also a view that there should not be clouds on title, that people should freely be able to buy and sell real estate. So what I'm gonna show all of you today, whether you're on the contractor side or whether you're on the property owner side, is what requirements are necessary to be able to effectuate a mechanics lien. And I think you're gonna be completely shocked, okay? This is my whiteboard. We've written it on it so much, it's all scratched up, so here we go. Essentially, when the work starts, if you are a subcontractor, a subcontractor, you are required to give a 20-day notice to the property owner as well as the general contractor usually, all right, and the construction lender if necessary, what things are being furnished on the property. This is very, very important. So essentially, if this is not complied with a 20-day notice, essentially a subsequent mechanics lien is invalid, all right? Secondly is, once the project is complete, you only have 90 days to be able to file a mechanics lien, only 90 days. So let's pretend that the project is done on January 1st, 2009. Well, 90 days from January 1st, 2009, if the subcontractor has given a required 20 day notice and 90 days have lapsed from January 1st, the deadline is hard and fast and therefore nobody is able to file a mechanics lien. The property owner, all right, can be able to cut down the time that people can file a mechanics lien. If they file a notice of completion, a notice of completion at the county recorder's office and gives notice to everybody, it gives 60 days to general contractors and 30 days to subcontractors to be able to file their mechanics lien. This is actually really shocking to a lot of people, especially to a lot of contractors because they're very much used to the 90 days. Again, notice of completion. A typical situation occurs when there's an abandonment of the project. What ends up happening when there's an abandonment of the project? Well, if you abandon the project, you have 60 days from the time the last project is stopped and then the 90 days begins to run. So let me give you an example. Let's say on January 1st, 2009, project is over. 20% is completed and the property owner says, you know what, forget it. I don't want to do the property anymore. Well, it's going to be 60 days from the, from the stop of the abandonment, and then from the 60 days, there's another 90 days to file the mechanics lien. Lastly, in terms of foreclosure, 
Let's say a subcontractor has given the required 20 day notice, they've filed their mechanics lien in 90 days, they only have 90 days to foreclose. So therefore, contractors that basically put a lien on a property and let it sit for two years, those are invalid. There is one caveat, and that is you must go to court to have the mechanics lien taken off. If you don't go to court to have the mechanics lien taken off, they can subsequently refile that mechanics lien and have it enforced against your property. What is the outcome of a properly filed mechanics lien? If you don't pay it, they can foreclose on your property. Again, in summary, 20 days for subcontractors. And I wanted to add in that if you are a general contractor, you don't need to give the 20 day notice. That's the general rule. 90 days from the time of project completion to file a mechanics lien. If you're a subcontractor, you have to give the 20 day notice. The 90 days, you can be able to cut it down to 60 and 30 days if you do a notice of completion, the property owner. If the property is abandoned, you have 60 days from the last time that you file, and then a 90 day period from the time of the 60 days, and then the foreclosure is the required 90 days. Charles, the answer to your question is this. Because of the fact that there was no foreclosure on your property, you're gonna be okay. It's an invalid lien you can go into court and the court's gonna wipe out that lien. Congratulations. Take care, have a good year, bye-bye.